Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Mindset Elevation Coach and Intentional Living Guide, Linda Joy. I am so excited that you're circling up with me today for another episode of inspiration, transformation, and loving support to guide you in living your best life. And if you're a woman craving a soul-nurturing community, a woman truly interested in personal and spiritual development, and you're a woman on the path of self-discovery and you yearn to learn a variety of transformational topics in a safe, high-vibe community, then I invite you to join me on the virtual campus of Inspired Living University. Inspired Living University is a sacred curriculum and community for women featuring live mindset elevation calls with yours truly, monthly themed circles with one of our expert faculty instructors, and quarterly virtual events that will tickle your soul. And as part of the curriculum, you have immediate access to well over 25 high value digital courses from our expert faculty from feng shui to human design, personal spiritual development, magic and miracles, everything that lights up your soul is waiting for you. Now listen, we only open the doors a few times a year and on 8-8, we are reopening the doors with our all new elevated look and I don't want you to miss it. Get on the VIP wait list at inspiredlivinguniversity.com. Well, we, you know, everything about the show is about bringing you guests that support you in living from the inside out, living um, your best life, but the life that was destined for you, not the life based on shoulds and have tos. And you hear me talk about that all the time. So I got to tell you, you're in for a special treat today because joining me is Kate King. Kate is a licensed professional counselor, a board certified art therapist, an artist, and the award-winning author of The Radiant Life Project. She's also the creator of the Ink and Wings Oracle deck. And we're going to be talking today about how to awaken your purpose, heal your past, and transform your future. Welcome, Kate. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here with you. I got to tell you, when I saw the cover and the name of the book, it just really spoke to me because I'm all about um, guiding my clients as well as my audience in living from the inside out. So before I even opened your book, when I saw the cover and just felt the energy of that phrase, the Radiant Life Project, I'm like, ooh, this is about, I bet this is about your inner light. So let's go back, Kate, to um, what led you to write this book? Was it something in your own personal journey? Because I found that most of the guests on the show, their mess becomes their message. Is that true for you? Oh, absolutely. I think sometimes it takes rock bottom or dark night of the soul to get people to that pain point where they get activated to really inspire change in their own lives because we get so comfortable and complacent. And sometimes, you know, we need to get a little rocked off balance. And that's certainly what happened to me with the Radiant Life Project. I had been working in a clinical psychotherapy practice for about 15 years and COVID struck and all the mental health providers, along with so many other frontline workers, were just really inundated with a lot of stress. And I let a lot of my self-care fall by the wayside. I took on way more clients than I probably should have because I felt the need was so strong. And I found myself at a pretty crispy burnout. Um, and it was really important for me to 
understand why, how I had gotten to that place. So I saved up as much money as I could. And I took a five month sabbatical from my private practice, did a deep dive into what had created so much burnout and who I wanted to be on the other side of it. And in that introspective time, the Radiant Life Project kind of dropped down into my awareness, kind of like a download and um, maybe from a higher self place. And I felt really guided to write it, to teach people not only what I have learned through my clinical experience and training, but also through my lived experience. So the book is sort of the combination of both those life experience and professional experiences that create a really beautiful synergy for helping people really dive into this really meaningful work that helps them to move through their trauma, to work with the unhealthy patterns and the narratives that might be holding them back or keeping them stunted in ways, and to really start to radiate from the inside out into a life that feels more fulfilling and purposeful and driven by that inner pilot light that's always looking for true north in life and authenticity and integrity. So this is the intention of the Radiant Life Project. I got to tell you, like just the phrase in a pilot light, right? It just speaks to me because I believe we're all born with that spark. Then life happens and it gets smothered. And yeah. for some of us, it can go out. For some of us, it might be still like an ember, but we've forgotten about it. So when I read the parts of your book that I was able to get to and came across the messaging in it, I go, that's what she's doing. This is all about, hey, you got this beautiful light inside you, essence. Um, let's reignite it. And there's something on the back cover too that I really love because it really encapsulates what the mission and what the book's about. And it says it's a groundbreaking approach to self-healing that combines science, creativity, psychology, and insightful personal growth tools for a happier, more meaningful life. It's the combination of everything that you've combined, which is what I love about this book, the depth of it. Thank you. I found that that's something that's unique about my approach. So many amazing books out there talk about kind of their one gem and they circle around it for the entire book, but I didn't have one gem that I wanted to teach. I have what I call a living library that I source from, and I feel like it's kind of streams through me so that it provides a really eclectic approach to this work that can be modified and returned to and worked with at different seasons of life, depending on where a person is. Well, that's what I love because you, there's such a variety of the offerings in the wisdom that you shared that it reaches us all wherever we may be. You know, Thank on you. our journey. On, and so everyone's different, right? So mm -hmm. I, I love that combination and so you called it the radiant life project so what does radiant mean to you well I actually define this on the first couple pages of the book so if, if it's okay I can actually read you my definition from the oh, book yes. yes please so I have the Merriam-Webster and the Cambridge di dictionary uh, definitions but my definitions I have four of them the experience or existence of being energetically lit from within, glowing and vibrant, possessing and outwardly expressing the qualities inherent in genuine inner beauty, resonating brilliant warmth and light harmoniously within the self and with others, lustrous vitality and life force energy circulating within oneself and beaming outward. Mm, can you feel that ladies right isn't that what we all yearn for is that like that feeling of inner fulfillment from the inside out that's beautiful thank you it's an approach that is truly from the inside out I think much of society and culture has taught us to build our identities from the outside in based on what other people expect of us and see in us and how we are seeing ourselves reflected in others. But this approach is the opposite of that because when you start from the inside and you build that 
fire and that pilot light to really glow with brilliance, it emanates beyond yourself. And that's how we can make ripples into our relationships and our families and even the world at large, just from starting with ourselves. So true. So true, my friend. And one of the things too, um, as I was reading the introduction, your own journey, as you just shared <clears throat> from that time of burnout to reigniting your inner flame. You share a lot of your own life experiences in, in, in the book, as well as so much other information. One of the sections that I love is, it's, a, it's not a section, but it's a part of everything that you're teaching. It's called offerings. So mm -hmm. tell me what your intention was for that and what they can expect to learn from the offerings that are part of through, scattered throughout the entire book. So I think that learning something theoretically only gets you so far. And when you're learning from someone who's teaching theoretically, you can feel it. There's a sense of shallowness to it. It feels intellectual, but not necessarily embodied. So the way that I write includes story because I think story connects and it helps to really demonstrate how I'm living this work and that's how I know it's effective and it works. So the offerings are sort of sprinkled throughout the chapters and they are experiential exercises that the reader can play with in their free time, in their journal or in their sketchbook. They can talk about it over coffee with a friend or just sit on their front porch and think about some of these things so that they can apply some of these teachings to their real life and take it from that theoretical perspective into an inexperiential place where it's actually integrating rather than just swimming around in their mind. Oh, I think that is key. It's been key in my own healing journey. So thank you for sharing the intention behind that. We're going to take our first break, my friends, and we'll be back. In the meantime, I want you to visit Kate at theradiantlifeproject.com. Grab a copy of her book, check out everything else that she is up to, and we'll be back in a moment. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Inspiration for a woman's soul. Aspire Magazine. Inspiring and supporting women on the path of self discovery. Claim your free digital subscription today, which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribe to aspire.com. Inner peace, joy, and fulfillment are yours, even if they feel out of reach. When you learn to befriend your shadow emotions instead of avoiding or stuffing them, you free yourself of self-sabotaging patterns, beliefs, and habits that keep you from living your most authentic life. As a life transitions coach, professional certified coach, certified RIM facilitator, IPEC Energy Leadership Master Practitioner and Human Design Consultant, Mary Jo Rathgeb intuitively and compassionately supports women to shine a light on their shadow emotions so they can reclaim the energy and wisdom contained within. This sacred work frees women to be who they really are and not someone they think they are supposed to be and empowers them to live a life that aligns with their deepest truth Learn more at MaryJoRathgeb.com. Consistently attract soulmate clients begin showing up on brand, monetizing on your calling. Welcome all spiritual coaches, leaders, healers, lightworkers, and practitioners to a show that turns you on in your business and amplifies your magnetism. I'm host, catalyst, and spiritual business coach, Rosalind Fung, and I'm here to journey with you into the juicy and help you discover where the real gaps are. Ignite your mindset and soul with strategies and systems as each episode takes you to the sweet spot that activates your soulgasmic business by tuning in on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Mountain. Join me for your light language activation and let's magnetize and monetize. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM.
Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. With me today is Kate King, licensed professional counselor, board certified art therapist, and the award winning author of The Radiant Life Project. So you talk about the true self, right? Um, in your work. How can a person find their true self, especially if they've kind of really become disconnected from the essence of who they are? It's such a good question. And it's an important one these days, because I think there's so much suffering right now in the planet at large. And there's so much controversy and fake media and really seductive traps to lose your true sense of self that I think most people probably do feel very disconnected from the essence of who they were born to be. So I take an internal family systems approach to the idea of true self. That's a model of therapy that was founded by Richard Schwartz. And it is my favorite model of therapy for both my personal work and for my work with clients, because it's not pathologizing. It doesn't talk about what's wrong with you, but instead it helps you understand the adaptive reasons that we get in our own way and how we do so because we're trying to protect ourselves. So this work talks about the difference between self and parts and the true self I like to explain as like the sun in the solar system, that's who you truly are at your soul's essence. And it's aligned with your purpose and it's aligned with your healthiest, highest version of yourself. But as you move through your life and difficult things happen, certain parts of yourself fractal off to defend you or protect you. So for example, if you're a child and you have maybe an absent parent who doesn't listen or pay attention to you unless you scream and cry and make a fit, you might adapt a part that becomes sort of the tantrum part because that gets your needs met. And that part might stick with you long after childhood because you learned that it actually works, that the squeaky wheel gets the oil. And so what happens is that the parts of us that adapt, be it this tantrum part, or a lot of people have a people-pleasing part, many of us have um, like a class clown part or a villain archetype. A lot of the Jungian archetypes can show up as parts and they orbit in front of the sun, which is the true self. And they can sort of eclipse and obscure that true self. And we forget that we are not that tantrum part or that people pleaser, that we are so much more. That's just a part of us. And it's showing up for a very good reason because that's what we've learned in our life to do when things feel a little off kilter. So the work of finding true self is first identifying what's not true self and the ways that you shape shift and show up inauthentically in your life or adaptively to protect yourself and finding the true self that is grounded and always present beneath and, and kind of behind all of those parts that obscure it. It's so powerful. I love how you said about um, our true self being obscured by everything that's come into our life. That's how it energetically felt for me. Like I was peeling off layers of muck to get my back to my light, mm -hmm. you know, as I was healing. Um, so when I saw the book cover and see the way you have that, the sun coming up, I'm like, yes, coming back into our own light. So that's beautiful. And I love how you explained all that too, because some of us, we hear terminology, we're not sure how it relates in our life and the way you just described it. I know so many are going to get it. They're going to go like, oh, yes. So one of the things you also talk about, and authenticity is one of my 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 words that I uh, live my life by, you call it authentic integrity. So let's talk about that. Yeah. So I also live my life by authenticity. And I remember when I wrote my first book, The Authentic Mother, back in 2014, authenticity wasn't such a buzzword. And so people looked at that title and they were like, authentic mother? What does that mean? And so it's really beautiful to see how far we've come just since 2014, that now people know what you mean when you say authenticity. And what I mean is I think of authenticity as what is real. And I also feel like authenticity isn't enough. Sometimes we need this integrity piece because integrity I define as what is true. And so when you combine together what is true and what is real, 
you get this authentic integrity that can really be a propelling force forward towards your true north that helps you show up in your relationships in a way that has dignity and respect for yourself and for others and for the connection itself. And you engage with your life from a place of honesty and truth and connection that authenticity and integrity together really foster. Uh, and I love in, the integrity. You're right. It, it's such an important piece. And I was just getting off a conversation with a, another guest. And it's all about um, my words to her were, our soul is always listening, right? So we're always breaking promises to, to ourselves or hiding behind masks, which I used to do. I think all of us did that, right? As I'm 62 now. So the first three, 30 years of my life, it was about being who I thought others wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. And then waking up from a cosmic two by four about 40, I had a mini stroke running my other business because I was in the type A driven running from my wounds and becoming very successful in my first business. But it was coming from a wounded place, right? Go, go, go. So you can win awards so you can feel better about yourself. But that dark night of the soul at 40 led me to say, this isn't who I am, but I have no idea who I am. That's what you're talking about, right? Getting back to identifying what's not the true self. Yes. You have to clear out what feels misaligned and what you're talking about, this hustle culture, this sort of hedonic treadmill that keeps you striving toward some future that may never show up and always feel sort of disappointing in how far it is away and exhausting and what it demands of us. That's not who you really are. And our culture has become so obsessed with productivity and with status and likes and all the things, followers, that we forget that that's not who we are. Those are just layers that have been put on top of us and obscured our true gifts. So it's really important in this work to understand that you have to detach from a lot of who you think you're supposed to be and maybe who you've been raised to be or influenced to be. And there is sort of a gaping chasm that exists in the space between letting go of all of that and discovering the truth of who you are. So it's like a trust fall when you let go of all of that and you just wait to see what alignment fills that space. Mm, beautifully said. Now I'm curious, when you went through your dark night of the soul in 2020 and took your sabbatical, it sounds as if you lived the principles and strategies and teachings of this book to get through your dark night of the soul, reignite um, your own light. And then that's when the idea to say, I want to share this with others, because you had to come from the darkness back into the light and identify what wasn't your true self. You lived all this. I did. I did. So I really write from experience with this. And not only from the experience of that sabbatical and burnout experience, but I do share some of my trauma healing as well. And some of the early narratives from my childhood that I've kind of unwired and rewired in new ways as I've come into closer contact with the true self that I've discovered along the way. This is beautiful. Now, throughout the book, you share the strategies, you share your guidance. I love that you share stories because I'm big about storytelling as a publisher, maybe that's why, but I love guiding women through my authentic storytelling process. But story, part of healing is what you just mentioned about you kind of re-scripted your childhood story, if I understand correctly, like you created a new story. Uh, walk us through that a little, and I want to make sure that I, I said that correctly. Yeah, so I think what happens to us all along the road of life is we come up against challenges. I don't think anyone alive is going to have a flawless and easy existence. And I think trauma and challenging experiences happen to varying degrees to different people. And 
when you're a child and something difficult happens, if you have a difficult caregiver relationship, or if something unthinkable happens to you, or even if it's what psychologists would call a little T trauma, which isn't a massive event, but it's something that derails your sense of safety and security in your body or in the world, something like bullying or uh, like feeling rejected, these little things become part of your identity of who a little person believes they are. And when we grow, we don't necessarily outgrow those narratives. They get baked in to the human we are as we age and develop. And sometimes it's not until adulthood when you can look back and say, oh, wow, I have all of these things baked in. And now as an adult, as a capable person with skills and resources, and I'm not dependent on my parents to take care of me and my brain is fully developed, I choose to go back for that little self and reparent that person who didn't get what they needed and teach them that the world can actually be safe and that I can show up for myself in ways that the adults in my life didn't. Oh, that's powerful. That's been a big part of my healing is the inner child work. <clears throat> and um, I, I wanted to, I'm looking at the time to go, let's take our break because I know I'd have to cut you off in a minute. Let's take our break now. And we're going to come back in a moment. And I am with Kate King, author of the Radiant Life Project. I invite you to visit the Radiant Life project.com grab a copy check out everything else she is up to and make sure you grab a copy of her her book we'll be right back my friends the best of the holistic spiritual and conscious world om times radio iom fm your worth is not determined by the number on the scale you are enough right now exactly as you are if you're like many midlife women you've thought if I could just reach my ideal weight, I'd be so much happier. What we're really craving is our own love and acceptance, and Sarah Haas is that guide for your journey. Sarah is a women's weight release expert and body love coach, and walks alongside midlife women ready to say yes to self-care, self-compassion, and body love so they can become the healthy, vibrant, and unapologetically confident women they're here to be. Her holistic approach integrates nutrition, body movement, and self-care to nurture body, mind, and spirit. Visit sarahaaswellness.com for supportive resources, programs, and more for midlife women ready to reclaim their health. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome Welcome my my shoes. Shoes. We've all felt left out, and for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. With me is the author of the award-winning The Radiant Life Project, Awaken Your Purpose, Heal Your Past, Transform Your Future, Miss Kate King. So we've been, we've been going deep with some of the content that is in The Radiant Life Project. I love that you have this beautiful combination of decades of um, being a licensed professional counselor. I'm curious where the art therapy comes in and what led you to that work? Actually, Google led me to it. <laughs> it was it was kind of back in the day when Google was this sort of new, exciting, fun tool. And I was in college and I had a dual degree, a bachelor's degree in psychology and art. And I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. And so I went to Google and I asked Google, what do you do with an art and psychology degree? And Google brought up the 
program at Naropa University in Boulder that I went to for art therapy. And it is part of a transpersonal counseling psychology degree, which is a degree that is the intersection between psyche and spirit. And it uses art therapy as the modality to do that work. And so this was the first time I had ever heard of art therapy and being a forever creative person from a very creative line of family, it was really appealing to me to consider using art for healing purposes. And the more I explored art therapy, the more I realized that I had actually been doing it on myself for my entire life without knowing it, that I had sketchbooks full of creative expressions that were holding a lot of emotion for me and helping me process experiences that I might not have been emotionally mature enough or aware enough to understand. But looking back, I can now see that my art has progressed in such monumental ways as I've healed. It's become more colorful. It's become more free and flexible. And back in those times of really deep trauma, it was black and white and rich and really rigid and really organized imagery that really indicated that a person is trying to keep it together. And so it's beautiful to be able to use art as a measuring stick like that to track health. And the more I learned about it, I had my first art therapy experiences working at a juvenile diversion center and an inpatient treatment home for children. So even before I started with my master's degree, I dipped my toe into the pool of art therapy to explore it. And it's such an expansive field that is for growth work, trauma healing, medical therapy. It's so pervasive for all different populations because we're all inherently creative. Our ancestors have been using art and expressive creativity for as long as humans have been alive. And it's not as widely used in society today as I think it could be. Um, so it creates this opportunity for us through creative expression to have sort of a back door into the psyche. And it allows us to see aspects of ourselves and our process in ways that feel really safe and accessible because we're creating something outside of ourselves to work with visually that allows us to see what we're ready to see and to do so in the container of a safe space with a trained art therapist. Mm, I love this. And now these days you're a radiant life coach. Now, do you still have your, your um, counseling practice or have you moved in to integrate everything, all your wisdom, and are now doing the coaching? So it's kind of a integrative approach. I still have my professional licensure and my board certification as an art therapist. Um, I just am not operating under a psychotherapeutic model anymore because I started to feel like it was limiting. Mm. It's not allowing me to work with clients who are out of state and I have clients now all across the globe. So I appreciate having that flexibility. And I also kind of grew to feel that the medical model of psychotherapy was a little bit cumbersome for the type of growth work I was trying to offer my clients. And the medical model can sometimes be so focused on what's broken or wrong with people. And I don't align with that perspective. My work is more about helping people grow the elements of themselves that feel solid and strong. And if something does feel misaligned, helping them nurture it or helping them clear it. So coaching felt like a much stronger fit for this growth-oriented perspective that, yes, incorporates trauma healing and incorporates mental health, but not in such a medical way. I love that because that's what resonates with me on my healing journey too. And uh, I have some clients that are therapists and coaches. They've all done the same. I'm sorry, psychotherapists and psychologists. And they said the same thing. They walked even walked away from insurance because they said, I can't serve from the way they want me to serve because it's out of alignment with what they believe. Mm -hmm. And now it's more like spiritual life counseling that takes the whole person, not just what happened to them or what's wrong with them that that framework so i think that's beautiful and so along with the radiant life project book what else do you have going on where women or anyone listening could step into do you have programs offerings I, coaching 
Yes, I do. Um, I have a small coaching practice where I work with one-on-one -on -one clients and I also offer group retreats. I have two retreats coming up for the remainder of this year, one in the Colorado area in July and one in Virginia in October. Um, I also do public speaking and I work with private companies for consulting and I lead trainings based on the Radiant Life Project and how to incorporate it into the office culture. Actually, the book, The Radiant Life Project, was selected by CEO Magazine as one of the top soulful reads for leaders. So I do this work for leadership as well in private companies. Um, and I also offer workshops and events online. I try to make certain offerings free so that they're accessible to everyone. And I really try to, you know, give different offerings. Some are creative based, some are writing based, some are question answer format or like a fireside chat. Uh, the retreats have been a beautiful place where we can bring together aligned women in supportive community to do this mind body work. So it's really been a very generative process of talking on podcasts and shows like yours and writing articles for magazines and just really trying to push this information out into the world to contribute to this brighter future that I think we all really want. Oh my goodness, yes. And everyone, again, that her website is theradiantlifeproject.com. So let's say someone right now listening is exactly where you were in 2020 burnt out i love your word crispy right um how can a person get from burnout over to radiance over to that bright inner light the first step is becoming honest with yourself that you're burned out and stepping off of that treadmill which can be the hardest part, I think, for many people, because we've been conditioned to just keep going no matter what, even to the extent where we have sayings like you can sleep when you're dead or, you know, pain is weakness leaving the body. Some of these things are, we've been conditioned to believe them, but actually they're so detrimental to our health because rest and nurturance and self-love and compassion and care are truly at the core of a healthy life. So I would encourage someone who's feeling crispy with burnout to get really honest with themselves about what's not working. And this might start in a conversation with a trusted person. It might happen in your journal, or you might just look in the mirror one day and see that the light is missing from your face and that you seem really unhappy, that your sleep is dysregulated. If your nervous system is out of whack, like insomnia or increases in anxiety or um, disconnection and apathy about your life, those are all signs that you can be in a burned out state. So after you get honest with yourself, then is the time for taking aligned action. And that will look different for different people. For me, it looked like saving up all of the money that I could save so that I could actually take a break. And I understand that that's not possible for everyone. So doing what feels right for you, maybe it's not a sabbatical, maybe it's incorporating an exercise routine or stretching first thing in the morning, maybe it's changing your group of friends and creating more aligned community, maybe it's just drinking more water or stop drinking alcohol or quitting some toxic behaviors that you've been using to numb yourself, maybe it's going to therapy or coaching. So I think there's a wide variety, but it's really important that after you acknowledge that something is not right, that you take that aligned action. And you don't have to know the entire trajectory of from here to when you're going to feel better. You just have to start. So I would acknowledge that and really just recommend that you take the first step and start where you are and move in the direction that feels better than the place that you've been. Oh, that's great advice. I love the aligned action because we. Some, I used to, I'll speak for myself, I used to stay in my head, make the decisions in my head, right? Thinking, okay, well, you just processed all that. What is that when I never... I never trusted enough to take that action step. I would just ruminate about the things I knew I had to change, but, but of course I would never take the action to change them. So for me, I love that aligned action part. 
in the first one too, becoming honest with yourself. I think that's major. It's but it's almost like you have to pause because we're, most of us are on that done hamster wheel. Pause and then go within so you can know what doesn't work. I think so many of us are going 100 miles an hour. We don't even know where to start to become honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And if you don't step off of that hamster wheel, the universe might kick you off. Or like you said, there's the cosmic two by four that oh, comes yeah. in the form of illness or divorce or other you know life experiences that will redirect you if you don't redirect yourself and I could sense that that's what was happening if I didn't answer the call during my time of burnout I felt like I was on the precipice of a very slippery slope that might lead toward illness so I'm grateful to myself for listening and taking the the sign and the message so I didn't have such a deep hole to crawl out of with a diagnosis or other parts of my life that maybe would crumble so that I could finally listen to the message. Mm, such a powerful reminder for all of us. We're going to take a final break, Kate, and then we'll come back for the last segment. I want to invite everyone to visit Kate at theradiantlifeproject.com. Check out her new book called The Radiant Life Project and discover everything else she is up to, including her upcoming retreats. We'll be back in a moment, my friends. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Your truest, deepest desires are calling you. The question is, will you answer the call? Former high-tech Fortune 500 leader Sharon Seberg knows how it feels to wear busyness as a badge of honor and to smother her dreams with the expectations of others. Walking away from her successful yet unfulfilling career, she chose to live a life connected to her intuitive wisdom and divine truth, and now lives a life of fulfillment, peace, and abundance. Today, Sharon is a neurotransformational coach, feminine power facilitator, and the visionary founder of the Soul Alignment Formula. She empathetically fuses cutting-edge neuroscience with intuitive coaching supporting successful women to unlock their full potential so they can live a life of authenticity and freedom. Are you ready to excavate your deepest desires and bring them to life? Start by visiting SharonSieberg.com. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No. I'm asking you questions. Like what? Hey, Bobo, do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look, flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Thanks for joining us today. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm Linda Joy, and with me is Kate King. So something you said too about you knew intuitively that at that time that you were on that precipice, that if you didn't listen, and that really resonates because at that moment for me at 40 years old, and again, I'm 62, gives you, it's been a while. I remember receive and I use different language now like cosmic two by four spiritual breadcrumbs back then I didn't use that language but hindsight's 2020 I look back there were so many signs the universe was sending me the divine was sending me and I'd I'd like get the flick on the ear like yeah yeah I'll listen later until the cosmic two by four hits and um I look back now going Lynn if you had just listened the year before I was I was receiving every sign that my body was in trouble but I think we are programmed, as we've talked about through this, to just push, go, keep going, don't stop. Um, and that's just the false narrative that we've all fallen into. 
Do you notice that with a lot of your clients? Absolutely. I think especially around the age of 40, that seems to be a really poignant time. And I think it's because people who are parents are not as inundated with the that overwhelm of the baby stage. So maybe they're starting to come back to themselves a little bit, looking at their relationships and taking stock of what's happening. And people who are not parents might just reach a place in their life where they're kind of sick of the games. They're tired of showing up inauthentically. There's something really powerful about that. And I also think the same thing happens at the initiation of every decade. I think people naturally take stock of their lives at these pivotal milestones. So a lot of my clients do. They come to me and they say, something doesn't feel aligned. I don't exactly know what I need to change, but I know that something needs to change. I'm sick of myself. I'm sick of the stories. I'm sick of these games. And they're inspired. And that is my favorite entry point into this work with people when they show up really inspired and excited to change, even if it comes from a place of trauma or illness, sometimes that's what it takes to get someone to that place. And it's like they're planting seeds for themselves for the future they would like to grow into by saying what they no longer want to tolerate in their lives. Mm, I love that. And it's so true. And I love what you said about planting seeds, right? It's being intentional. Mm -hmm. and I gotta ask about the retreat so you got a July retreat coming up in Colorado and then one where was the second one in Virginia and there's still openings if anyone's interested do you still have openings in it I have a couple of openings it's in Floyd Virginia and it's a four-day retreat I am co-hosting this retreat with an Ayurvedic practitioner and a yoga teacher and so the mind-body connection is really strong in the way that we synergize our work. Um, and it's women only. It's at a wonderful retreat center called Anahata that will allow us all to stay in close quarters for four days and share meals and circle time together and experiences in nature and bringing creative things so that we can express creatively and explore our therapy together. So it should be a beautiful experience. Well, I want to invite everyone again, get over to theradiantlifeproject.com, learn about that opportunity and everything else that Kate has coming up. So what is the number one thing? I always ask authors this. Let's do two. What are the top two things that you hope a reader walks away with? The first thing, I hope my readers feel seen in their desire for something better and in their desire to have more than just survival, but to really thrive in their lives. Because I think a lot of people feel like the status quo is good enough and they have to settle for it. So I really hope that my readers understand that there's more. And the second thing I hope for my readers is this living library that is this book full of eclectic offerings and teachings I hope you find some things that really tickle your fancy and that teach you methods that you may not have ever heard of before and might feel really activated and inspired to try something new and to go just enough out of your comfort zone with this work where you feel both challenged and supported, because I think that's the beautiful place where growth can happen. No, oh, so beautifully said, my friend. And I want to I want to give them a little tease of some of the chapters, like chapter one, the quest for authenticity, seeking a fresh face in the sea of masks. And when I read that, I was like, whoa, isn't that the way the world is right now? Let's put on these personas and Instagram uh, personas, and we're losing the truth of who we are. And then another one that spoke to me just where on my journey, especially the last 10 years is nurturance in deep rest the what when and how i gotta tell you kate for me learning to nurture myself was a big thing and i probably didn't start and i might still struggle with it occasionally but i didn't start to understand the importance and depth of that until probably late 40s early 50s and now like i have a 13 year old granddaughter and a 24 year old grandson and i'm like especially the, the little goddess, I tell her, I want her to know these things. I don't want her to wake up at 40 like I did. 
So I love when she curls up with her, her sketch pad and says, I'm just going to go, she calls it waffling. She says, I'm going to go waffle now. And she goes into her little nook and draws. And I want her to know that she deserves that. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. Don't, yeah. And don't you think too, as something you said, at the, I think was at the beginning that like, we're, I, we're the role models, right? I always say women are the nurturers of the next generation. So we want to heal ourselves so that our stuff don't become their stuff. Right. 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 And, and so when I saw that word nurturance and deep rest, like my soul was like, yes. Mm -hmm. And then you have another chapter called ancestral trauma, epigenetics and lineage patterns. And I wanted to give that little tease because this book goes deep. I'm, I'm looking at the rest of them now. Um, the book goes deep and you give so many insight strategies. You give the offering section. And I want to invite women, right? If you're feeling burnt out, disconnected from your truth, disconnected from your life and disconnected from your joy, which was my truth. I was just existing. I wasn't being, I wasn't living. Then please give yourself this gift. Grab a copy of the Radiant Life Project at theradiantlifeproject.com because you heard Kate's story. You already know my story of transformation. You know from our stories what's possible. You're no different from us, my friend. What's possible for us is possible for you. And it starts by giving yourself this gift, diving in and doing what Kate says, taking aligned action. Um, because you deserve this and so much more. And um, Kate, we still have a few minutes. We have a final piece of wisdom for a woman who may be feeling really stuck and disconnected right now. I'd like to say that this work happens in layers. So if you feel overwhelmed by the amount of work you have to do, or if you're feeling resistant to even getting started, I think it's important that you remember that it's a process, that there's no end goal here except for your own engagement with your life. And so I always encourage people to work with the layers as they present, like a stack of bricks. You take the top one off first, because if you try to grab one of the bottom bricks from a stack, you could destabilize the wall and it will come crashing down. And that's how our nervous system works too. So you don't have to dive for your deepest, darkest trauma on day one. When it's ready for you to work with it, it will float to the top and it will feel approachable. But until then, work with what's present, whether it's a tough relationship at work or a behavior that you do like binge eating or binging Netflix or Maybe you have a certain pattern that you don't like about yourself, like gossiping. All of these things could just be the top layers that lead you down deeper into the stack where you'll start to do all the work that you need to do, but trust your system that there is a meaningful sequence that will help keep you regulated through the entirety of it. Beautiful guidance, my friend. And I want to invite everyone again to go to the radiantlifeproject.com, grab a copy of Kate's book, stay connected with her, follow her on all her social media platforms. And Kate, I want to say thank you for having the courage to bring this work to life, for going through your pain and struggle and coming back into the light, because this is a message that is so needed. So thank you. Of course. And thank you for making your impact in the world as well and for sharing all of this valuable teaching with your audience. Well, I, I truly believe if, if you're given a platform of any kind to use it for good, right? So I love, love, love shining a spotlight on women who through their own gifts and offerings and wisdom are changing the world. So I like to say I'm using my media platform for good and I'm so glad I could shine a spotlight on your work, my friend. Thank you so much. Until next time, my friends. Choose love, choose joy, choose happiness. Blessings, everyone. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, 
coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.